We're going to talk now about the new reporting on payments to the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. Citing documents, it reviewed the Washington Post reports that conservative judicial activist Leonard Leo paid Ginny Thomas tens of thousands of dollars for consulting work, but gave specific instructions that her name be left off the paperwork. According to the Post, in January of 2012, Leo instructed GOP pollster Kellyanne Conway to bill a nonprofit group he advises and use that money to pay Thomas. The same year, the nonprofit, the Judicial Education Project, filed a brief to the Supreme Court challenging a landmark civil rights law aimed at protecting minority voters. NBC News has not seen the documents or independently confirmed this reporting. In a statement to the Post, Leo addressed his instructions for the paperwork, writing, quote, knowing how disrespectful, malicious, and gossipy people can be, I have always tried to protect the privacy of Justice Thomas and Ginny. When, wait, Leonard. Just let that sit when for a second. When you're sending money to Take that in. a Supreme Court justice or a, a family member of the Supreme Court justice, it's gossipy for Americans know that that money's being funneled. And this is a guy who now what? He's got $1.5 billion to funnel around. <sighs> Ken. Uh, listen, I, I've got to say, at some point, I, I, you know, I, I, I've always uh, admired the fact that John Roberts is an institutionalist, even when I didn't agree with right. uh, his rulings on both sides. Uh, but I always respected the fact that he was an institutionalist. But that label only applies to him uh, for so long if he allows this to continue in his court without coming out. I mean, because at the end of the day, Either the Supreme Court is going to issue a new set of ethics rules and guidelines or another branch of government are. The United States Congress has the power and the authority to do it. And you just wonder if if the chief justice is going to keep sitting back and letting all of this information come out, most of it against Clarence Thomas, that hurts the court. And this story, I think, has a different character than some of the others mm -hmm. because... This is a, I mean, this is a direct payment and an effort to conceal a payment. This isn't about luxury travel, which is bad enough. You know, I mean, trying to conceal a payment, right? Giving instructions, conceal this payment to a justice's wife. Well, it flies in the face also of these disclosure documents that, you know, I didn't really understand how to right. do them. I didn't think I could do them or whatever the excuse is. You know, now... Now it appears that there was an effort to make sure things weren't seen. Is you know, that fair? Yeah, and I, I, as a report, people have known for years or suspected that Supreme Court justices were taking trips that weren't disclosed. There was actually an effort that I'm aware of on the Senate Judiciary Committee to try to track that by going to the marshals who protect the justices and try to try to get records. But they were unsuccessful. They, they couldn't penetrate the veil of secrecy. And now good journalists have done that. And I think it's important that we're learning all this. And, and by, by the way, we're going to hear BS uh, from from the usual defenders of Clarence Thomas. Oh, they're just picking on him because he's a conservative and they hate black conservatives. This challenges the you know, blah, 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 all of this other nonsense. If we were reporting on a story this morning yeah. that Chuck Schumer's wife got paid you know, tens of thousands of dollars and that there had been a direction from the biggest lobbyist in the Democratic Party to keep the payments quiet. We'd be saying the same thing here today. And that is a pure rank nonsense that the, that, that the Wall Street Journal editorial page, National Review, all these other people have been spewing about how, oh, they're just picking on Clarence. No, this is obvious. This is obvious as Clarence Thomas going through everything that he and his wife were going through in the middle of January the 6th. And, and not stepping aside on a case where he became the lone dissenter when he had a real interest uh, in that case itself. It just keeps piling up. It, it, it does. I mean, assertion after assertion, I want to say fact after fact, but we're still investigating this. Uh, trips for Thomas, payments for school tuitions for people who are related to him, payments to his wife. 
you get the sense that uh, Thomas and others on the court uh, see themselves as victims. You know, people are out there to get us and, and think that they get to live by different rules oh, than they any other, live any by other judge rules. In, in America. By the way, I knew guys I served with in Congress who got a golf trip to Ireland paid for by Jack Abramoff Just a basketball game. and went to jail went to jail. Bob Nay went to jail for that. There were several others who went to jail. And these guys are whining about how they're victims. No, uh, Jonathan Almir, they're not victims. They're on the Supreme Court of the United States of America, nine of the most powerful people in the world. They just apparently don't think that the rules that apply to members of Congress apply to them. And you know who's not happy about that? Members of Congress. Yeah, the Senate Judiciary Committee, of course, convened just this week to try to get a code of ethics put in place for the Supreme Court. Chief Justice Roberts declined to attend, and those efforts have been utterly stymied. And there's been some reporting about a, a gift, a favor given to Justice Gorsuch, but most of this surrounds uh, Clarence Thomas, of course. The Harlan Crow reporting from earlier this week, even just yesterday, we had ProRepublica reporter on the show here talking about tuition payments being mm -hmm. paid uh, for the child who the Thomases were raising as their son. Uh, but it's also worth spending a moment just really emphasizing who Ginny Thomas is here. Uh, it's a hugely important figure uh, on the right for a number of years and it was indeed it was her text messages to Mark Meadows that were so key she was urging him in the wake of the 2020 election to keep fighting to try to overturn the democratic process we're we're mm -hmm. showing a few of them now here talking about how media reporters should be arrested detained for ballot fraud people should be going to Gitmo? Uh, she, 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 says, she, she said, if you go back to that last one, Jenny Thomas saying that the Biden crime, family Biden crime family should be on barges, criminal barges off of Gitmo. This you is talk about the radicalism and the extremism, which, by the way, had an impact on Clarence Thomas and the way he ruled in a case involving January the 6th. How can it not? Biden crime family. This is stuff right off of Breitbart and the extreme right wings. Here she is saying, help this great president stand firm, Mark. Uh, the majority knows Biden and the left is attempting the greatest heist of our history. Another message she suggests that Donald Trump was divinely inspired to be there to lead the republic. So, so Kate, so talk to, I mean, this is all seemingly linked. And also in those messages, Jenny Thomas talks about how she discusses this all with her, quote, best friend, who reporting later reveals, of course, is her husband, Clarence Thomas. So just tell us about the role that she plays and why this is so disturbing that someone so close to a justice espousing those sort of radical, dangerous views, her husband is receiving, she and her husband are receiving gifts and payments from some of the most influential people on the right who have business in front of the Supreme Court. Yeah. Well, right. I mean, it's it's appalling, frankly. It is appalling. And if you look at, you know, the the role that uh, Justice Thomas has in deciding some of these cases, I mean, if you look at the if you look at the post story this morning uh, about the Leonard Leo money, the case that was in front of Justice Thomas following that payoff, essentially, oh. uh, was was Shelby, was the Voting Rights, was the Voting Rights Act case. So, I mean, these are this influence and this uh, attempt to um, to hide influence is is having a has a massive and real life impact on uh, things that matter to people. I mean, we're, we're talking about your protecting your right to vote. We're talking about uh, somebody who sits on the court and makes a decision about whether people who have historically been disenfranchised in this country are going to continue to have access to the ballot box. So I think we should not lose sight of that, too, that the underlying case that we're talking about uh, this morning, uh, you know, is the Voting Rights Act case. And, you know, the other thing, you know, Joe, you mentioned Bob Ney. I mean, the Republicans also lost the House in 2006, in part because of the, the Abramoff scandal and because right. people were paid off. So, you know, Americans have shown that this is not, uh, you know, this is not behavior that they support when, you know, when people have the opportunity to vote and to say, you know, this is not what I want from an elected official or, yeah. you know, obviously uh, and, someone and, on the judiciary and, who's, out, who's yeah. outside of, of uh, you know, someone on the Supreme Court who's outside of, of you know, facing uh, political ramifications. But, you know, this is part of why people are losing faith in institutions, have lost faith in institutions. It's incredibly, incredibly damaging. Well